Hey guys, it's Spaces Sims, and we are back with more Pio Fiore 1926. Just continuing where we left off, still in chapter four, I think, of Henry's Row. So, anyway. After spending the afternoon chatting, I noticed th that the sun was beginning to set. It helps if I could learn how to read. Or say words. And to be frank, we received a call from Sebastiano at the hotel. Henry and I explained the details about the phone call to Nicola. I know it's a bother, but any extra security you could lend the hotel would be greatly appreciated. Hold on a second. Do we have... Oh, we don't think we have sound. Hmm. All right, uh, hold on a second. Let me fix this. Okay, that's better. We had sound from me, but we had no sound from the game. I was like, um, I know sometimes it doesn't really register, but I was like, the thing's not registering, but that's okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, I'll discuss it with Dante, but I think we can get a few guards to start there tonight. You probably can't even hear the music, but like, at least, but if it's not there, I just feel like it's weird. Just in case. <laughs> I don't know. If we're lucky, we might even be able to capture Sebastiano's underlings. Just then, Julia, who was in the kitchen, came out to check on us in the salon. Would you care for some more coffee? I've had enough, thank you. But besides, we should get back to the hotel before dark. Yes, we've stayed long enough already. Oh, but Julia? Yes? If you don't mind, would you share your amaretto recipe with me next time? Yes, of course. It's quite simple. I can write down the recipe and give it to you now. Thank you. Aw, we're doing that for Henry. We're adorable. I love it. When Julia smiled and left the salon, Henry stood up from the sofa. And then I'll head outside first. I'll wait for you by the car. Now that Nicola and I were alone, the salon was very quiet. After a moment, he broke the silence. I'm glad to see you two are getting along so well. So this is what Henry is like now. Was he different before? The air's much calmer when you're around. I can tell from the way he looks at you that you mean a lot to him. Really? Because I don't get that at all. <laughs> he hides that so well from me. Haven't you noticed? The power of love is truly incredible to witness. The power of love. Nicholas like, girl. Look at the look on his face. He's like, you didn't know? I know I'm in love with him, but... Is something wrong, Nicola? No, it's just that I didn't expect you to be so embarrassed. Rather than teasing me, Nicola actually appeared to be puzzled by my reaction. Well, I suppose I didn't think of it as love. Henry doesn't see me in that way. I mean, I do like him, but the situation is different from what you think, Nick. From what you might think, Nicola. He's like, I don't think so. Nicola? Well... I have thought about it, and it makes me uncomfortable to some degree. I was confused, and he suddenly looked at me with a serious expression. Are you gonna fucking, like, talk- hit on me- t Is everybody uncomfortable with me dating Henry because they're all in love with me? Man harem- It's the most man harem-esque route ever. Man harem -y. I was gonna say man harem and it just wasn't gonna work. <laughs> I won't comment on what Henry thinks. Not only because I don't have to, but because I don't want to. But I will say this space, if you'll let me. I nodded, drawn into the gravity of Nicola's voice. Last winter, you ran into a burning building for him. You risked your life to save his, and you escaped knowing the Mafia would look for you. I'm certain that your family at the church and this town where you grew up are both very important to you. It must have been a difficult decision to leave Berlone. Still, you chose his hand instead. I realized it all at that moment. Was it such a difficult decision? No, it felt very clear to me. Nicola was right about how I felt when it came to the church in this town. But at the time, I was so desperate I didn't have time to think at all. All I wanted was for Henry to live. I was willing to do anything for that purpose. After choosing him over everything else, do you still believe that it's not the way I think? His words were so shocking to me that I couldn't respond immediately. <laughs> I love that Nicola's like, is the only one. Everyone else is like, they'll figure it out. He's like, girl, 
slap. Do you, are you dumb? Apparently. <laughs> like, I mean, but sometimes you just, you're trying to convince yourself otherwise. You know what I mean? And also the way Henry acts around us, you're like, no, I mean, it's not love. I don't love it. Because if you're like, I am in love with him, desperately in love with him, and he does not feel that way about me, that would feel worse than like, it is not love. We are fine. You know what I mean? We got to delude ourselves a little. And we are deluding ourselves that everything is fine, not he will love me someday. So, I mean, I mean, to be fair, he will love us someday. He does already now, but I think I... Nicola watched me for a while, then he smiled mischievously. Oh, one last question for you, Space. Haven't you ever heard that love is illogical? I'm not sure I want to keep talking about this. You don't give up, do you? I thought you were more open-minded than that. Maybe I've just been afraid. No, maybe I was trying hard not to notice. I know I felt sympathy for him at first. But sympathy alone wouldn't have been enough to make me abandon my hometown. The desire I have to be near him. What Nicholas said seemed to string together all these events with just one word. If only Henry could see your face now. Even without looking at a mirror, I could feel how much I was blushing. I didn't know why I refused to accept it until now. If any of it had been on a conscious level, perhaps it was because... My feelings would only be troublesome to Henry. Mm -hmm. And denying you're in love with him saves you a little bit of heartache. At that moment, one of the members walked in with a hard expression. Underboss, uh, for you! Nicola looked down at the piece of paper that was handed to him and became serious. Henry abandoned you here. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Henry went out to the car, but without a... He left us here, didn't he? That son of a bitch. <laughs> Honestly, I would laugh my ass off if Henry frickin' bamboozled us a second time. Space, I was gonna see you off from here, but I think this is something Henry should know. Well, let's walk outside together. Without waiting for Julia's return, he stood up and urged me forward. But I wanted the recipe to make Henry love me. Feeling rattled by Nicola's sudden behavior, I left with him as instructed. <sighs> Julia's going to be like, what a rude asshole. She asked me for the recipe and left. Nicola called out to Henry as he approached. Henry, I have some bad news. Someone's disinterred Chloe Lambert's grave. <gasps> oh. That is just, I'm not, that's slightly less wrong than slaughtering infants, infants, in orphans, children, and children at all. That it's, that, the slaughtering of the orphans is slightly above this, but this is also bad. I mean, murdering people is bad, but like, you get used to that. You get a little desensitized to like, well, people murdering each other, but like, oh, you murdered orphans. That's a step past. But like. You dug up his dead sister? That's a little fucked up, man. Like, leave her alone. She's dead. She's already had enough suffering. The news left me speechless. I mean, it had to be the Phantom. Who else would do that? Nobody in this game. Look, they will murder people. They will slice people up. They will do all sorts of dastardly, underhanded, shady, devious, disgusting things. But they would not cross that line. So, I'm just saying. <laughs> Henry showed no signs of emotion, not even anger or sadness. I thought the church was being guarded now. The guards were stationed near the main living quarters, so the graveyard was unsecured. Nicholas, like, why would we, like, we weren't expecting this, I mean, fair. According to the report, they got through the front by posing as, un uh, of uni as uniformed contractors. Sorry. Henry exhaled as if to control his emotions, then said quietly, I want to stop by the church before returning to the hotel. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. I'll come with you. I need to confirm some things. We got in the car and headed straight for Arca. When we arrived, we were able to see it with our own eyes. Chloe's casket had been dug up and her remains stolen. Oh! Oh no! Oh dear! That's even worse! 
I mean, I kind of expected that he took her body, but at the same time, I was thinking maybe he didn't because that is a whole level of gross. Like, I'm she's been dead for a while. What are we, like, 18 or 19 or some shit, right? Somewhere. She's been dead for at least 18 years, but, like, I don't... And I don't really know what embalming was like in the 1920s. Um, I'm going to assume it's not as good as the 2020s. Okay. I'm assuming our embalming technology has progressed a little. Who knows? Who knows? And like, but I just, I, and I don't know anything about science and how long it takes a corpse to decompose, but like, I mean, Like you're like when you find mummies, like oh, it's 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 like a, a mummified remains. But that's been like a long, that's more than eighteen years. So I just, I don't, I don't know. The, you know what I mean? Like you're like, is it she's just like skeleton with some clumps of hair? Like it's not like, or it's like super cre- like uh, you know what I mean? You know, you just I, I, I'm just, it's <laughs> oh dear. Oh, dear. Oh, my. Okay, look. The Phantom is hot. But, like, he just... I can't stand by what I said when we were in the Alternativa route with, like, let us date the Phantom! He is hot! I know he's crazy, but now he's just crossed too many lines, and you're like, no, I don't think there's coming back from this. There is crazy trash, and then there is just whatever we have here. I still want to see how beautiful he is without the mask on. But, like, there's no coming back from this where you could justify and be like, well, I mean, he's, like, trash. Yang is trash. And we're here for it. We love it. Kind of everyone in this game is trash. We're here for it. We love it. We tolerate it. And, like, we've had love interests or just characters where you're like, they are just the worst. But for some reason, I'm into it. I'm thinking about Sashin from Steam Prison. Like, that was just, a, like... You could see that flaming dumpster fire from space, and there was still something about it that was like, I'm kind of into it. You're going to torture me and lock me in a cage? I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? And, and meanwhile, there's other love interests. Toma! Still fuck you, okay? And Finn from Steam Prison. Still fuck you. I don't know, you know. But, like, now I'm just in one of those, like, I'm not sure... If they were ever like, here's the Phantom, do you want to date him? I'm going to go with maybe no. I mean, sometimes we've changed our minds. I didn't like Marco at first. Now I'm like, well, I mean, if we had a ride with Marco, like, sure, okay, I could be done with that. Because he's probably a lot nicer than they kind of, they made him a little shady and douchey and creepy, like, in the first one. But, like, eh, okay, 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 okay. Maybe my first impressions were wrong. But now, like, again, my first impressions were wrong and I'm reconsidering. <laughs> I still want to see him without his mask on, though. Like, it's a curiosity thing. But, like, you know, I I like the crazy flamboyant ones, but he might have gone a little too crazy. This is a little... This, just, just We slaughtered orphans, and I was kind of questioning it then, but this is... Yeah, no, no, we're, we're definitely beyond help. <laughs> oh! I'm questioning all my life decisions at this point. I don't know why, but anyway. Oh dear. Oh dear. Please don't give me a CG of this. Like the fucking phantom dancing with his with freaking Chloe's corpse. Like ble I'm just saying, now you're that's in your head, and you're welcome. If I have to have that horrible mental image, so do you. From the moment we arrived at the cemetery to when we returned to the hotel, Henry said nothing. I felt there was nothing I could say either. We had to drive back to the hotel in complete silence. I mean, what do you say? Like, what do you say to that? How do you even? <laughs> After a while, he spoke my name. Miss Maisie, how about my sister's grave? Y yes? Henry was surprisingly calm. In fact, I was the one who looked more upset than he was. I know I've made you uneasy, but there's nothing to worry about. I'm like, are you sure? Because at least if you were angry or upset or showed some emotion, I might believe you. But the fact that you have shown none means that when you see the phantom, you're going to snap and it's going to be like insane. Sebastiana was the one who unearthed Chloe's grave. 
and that means his attention is still focused on me. He is a dangerous person, but at least for the present moment, we know his attention has not yet wandered to you. I looked at Henry and said, Thank you. I'm still worried. I'm still worried. Like, I feel like I'm still worried, and it's not I'm worried for me. I'm worried for Henry, is what I would think. Yeah, okay, I'm still worried. Good. I'm still worried regardless. Even if the rest of us are safe for now. He's still after you, Henry. I'm so glad that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, I'm still worried, but about you. Thank you, game. Wow. He was being targeted by a dangerous man who would stop at nothing to get to him. That fact weighed heavily on my mind. What can I do to protect Henry from Sebastiano? I wish there was something I could do. But I'm frustrated because I know there isn't. Daisy. He smiled softly as he spoke my name. Thank you. His voice sounded so kind. Can we just kiss this man already? They're gonna just drag it out. Oh my god, just let me kiss him already. Despite how chilling the situation was, I felt my cheeks grow warmer. It seems Sebastiano is more obsessed with me than I thought. However, if he's only after me and not multiple townspeople, then there are things we can do. It will be difficult to get out of him, but... Well, we can take certain actions to avoid the worst possible situation. I nodded, at which he added with concern. You must be tired. You should get some rest. Yes, then... Good night, Henry. I was sure he had a lot to think about, and I'd only be in the way if I stayed out here. <laughs> that was his, like, you must be tired. I'm fine. Oh, you want me to go? Okay, never mind. I'll leave you to yourself. When we saw Sebastiano, he said he wasn't angry at Henry. And why is he doing so much to hurt him? I clasped my hands together without realizing. I remembered what Henry told me before. Ugh. I mean, angry Henry is angry Henry, but like, angry Henry dressed in the Dude Tori outfit is something so different, but it's still goddamn amazing. I love it. I despise the fell zone for killing my sister, Chloe. Ever since Chloe died, I spent every single day of my life living for vengeance. I kept myself open to options. I would never let them go for what they've done. I would do anything to eliminate them. Henry did everything he could against the Burlone Mafia to avenge his lost family. He loved his family so much. Even when he heard about Chloe's grave being dug up, even when he witnessed it himself, Henry appeared completely calm. I knew he was only trying to hide his agony. I heard the door open. Is that Henry's door? I wondered if he was leaving for somewhere or if someone had arrived. I hesitated for a second, then opened my door. Henry? He was standing near the entrance, holding a white envelope in his hand. It must have just been delivered. Who is it from? Who do you think? Like, we asked that, but it was like, stupid question. I asked an associate of mine to investigate someone. And this is their report. Oh, okay, then it wasn't a stupid question. Stupid me for saying it was a stupid question. Shame on me! I was like, it's from Sebastiano. It's not. Henry gave his answer without pause, but a part of me suspected that it was something else. Mm, that's what I was thinking, so okay. My eyes lingered on his for a while, and he began to look uncomfortable. Can I read it too? I would prefer that you not. Henry gave a melancholic sigh, but opened the envelope without attempting to hide it further. Inside was a small card. Uh... It was stained in blood and looked similar to the one left behind at the house in Falche. That one doesn't look stained in blood, but... Dearest Henry, won't you meet me tomorrow under the morning sun? I will return your sister to you if you bring the key maiden to the ruins where the relic lies. Well, that's a hard choice for Henry. I mean, I say that and it sounds slightly sarcastic, but I mean, like... Henry would want his sister put back where she belongs, but, like, he's gonna trade... A living person for a corpse but at the same time it's like but like you know what I mean, I mean this should be a no-brainer i am not gonna trade a living person for a pile of bones 
But at the same time, you're like, but poor Chloe deserves to be laid to rest in peace and left there, not dug up and used as a hostage. Like, so like, you can kind of understand being slightly perplexed here, you know? I knew of the place he specified. And these ruins are home to the sacred relic guarded by the Falzone. The ruins in the forest outside of town. I suppose this is the invitation he was telling you about before. Let me go with you, Henry. When I said that, he looked a little angry and frowned. Kind of like it when Henry is angry with me. I'm not going to lie. There is something about him looking angry like, how dare you? Like... Oh. Like, I don't know. I just like it. No. I won't allow you to be put in danger. But if I don't go, then Chloe... I lost my voice after saying her name. Henry's eyes were no longer gentle and calm. I could finally see what was deep inside. He spoke slowly, revealing his innermost thoughts. I'm angry that my sister's grave has been vandalized. I'd like to retrieve her if I can. But, I was grateful that he worried so much about me. But if there was anything at all that I could do to help him, then... Is Henry, I want to get Chloe back. I want him to return your sister to you. See, Henry, this is where you need to snap and kiss me and just, like, show me that you love me so that I stop saying stupid shit like this. And I comprehend, because now it's like, I love you so much, Henry, I would do anything. I'll sacrifice myself to get your dead sister back for you. And he's like... Are you stupid? I love you. But we don't know that. We don't know he loves us. So we're just like, oh, eh, well. Sacrifice myself to get his dead sister back so he's happy. That would make him happy because I'm just an annoyance to him. Even though he tells us we're not, she still doesn't get it through her head because like, hello, Henry, just admit you're in love with us. And then maybe things will finally click for us. We got all the pieces. We're just not putting them together. Okay. I promise not to do anything without your permission. I'll follow everything you say. Perhaps realizing then that I was serious, he gave a heavy sigh. Understood. Thank you, Henry. Would you, would you just admit you love us? This would have been the perfect time for you to get angry at us and be like, no, because I love you, goddammit. Why do you keep doing this shit for me? But like, he is also just like, I know she loves me, but I'm not worth it. So not going to admit that I have feelings. Oh, dear God. The man's impossible. I like it, but he's impossible. I was relieved that he accepted, and my mind raced, uh, raced to what would happen tomorrow. Why had Sebastiano called us out to meet him there? Would he really hand over Chloe? Without any further conflict? <laughs> no. By tomorrow morning, everything would finally become clear. But it's only chapter four, and we got two more chapters, so like, uh, we ain't getting a resolution here. Even if this goes into chapter 5 right now? Nope. So, I mean, we're definitely not going to resolution. The next morning, Henry and I stepped onto the hilltop as the beautiful morning glow spread across the eastern sky. Sebastiano was already waiting for us in front of the ruins. There was a bag at his feet, but it didn't look big enough to be carrying what we had come all this way for. Oh god, is it just her head? Good morning! How wonderful to have you here, bright and early. You must have been so eager to see me as soon as possible. You're fun, but you're literally nuts. I want a fun, kinda nuts character who maybe doesn't dig up dead bodies and murder orphans. You know what I'm just saying? I'm just saying, like, the Phantom is, like, so much fun, and there's crazy, and you know we like the crazy trash, but he's just crossed some lines where you're like, I'm gonna need maybe, like, this character, but, like, a little less psycho. Just tone it down a little bit. Slightly, maybe redeemable in some way. You know? Like, yeah, kind of redeemable a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, it's not as stabby as it used to be. Right? You know? Even when we're not romancing him, he's not quite as stabby and evil because he made friends or some shit. You know what I mean? Power of friendship. My little pony in the power of friendship. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, uh, does that make him Applejack because he's the feistier one or is he like Rainbow Dash because like I don't no 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 Gil would totally be Rainbow Dash <laughs> uh, like, have fun figuring out which my little pony they are but like you know what I mean like I'm gonna need to tone it down just a little bit 
He would be Discord, but... Oh, no, there you go. Or would Henry be Discord? Okay. You know what I mean? Because, like, he's kind of evil, but you gotta love a character that's voiced by John Delancey, who is Q in Star Trek. You've got to love that parallel. You're like, this is great! I'm happy here. That's, like, the best. Weird, stupid facts. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know. But all of our crazy love, they've been redeemable. I'm not really necessarily sure the Phantom is. But, like, I like the vibe he's given out. I like the crazy, over-the-top dramatics. I'm here for that. Just maybe murder less orphans and dig up less bodies. That's all I'm saying, you know? You know, that was a line. And you're past it now. And eh. But I'm still here for the dramatics. You know? It's still entertaining. And the mask and the suit and the everything about the look is here. You know? I'm a visual lover, okay? I love when they look beautiful. You know, it could be like, this is the best route ever, but I don't know. <laughs> well, that's... That's kind of wrong. <laughs> oh, good lord. Anyway. If only you had specified a time rather than simply morning. <laughs> but don't you see? I thought it'd be ever so fun to see when you two would decide to arrive. Sebastiano laughed aloud, then turned his gaze to me, his mouth curling into a grimace. How very lovely. Your soft golden hair is exquisite under the sunlight. Needless to say, I'm rather fond of Henry Henry's hair as well. Pale flax dipped in pale honey, I would say. Very nice indeed. I wish I could put you in a beautiful glass case and admire you forever. And you can't tell me that he's not a little bit gay for Henry. Because this is just... Listen. Listen. I know there was a point in time where men were a little more flamboyant wearing their heels and their peacock feathers. And, you know, there wasn't as much toxic masculinity because it was like everybody is wearing pink corsets and big ass wigs and high heels and shit. Okay. Like high heels were made for men. They were invented for men. So like, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, and like in the animal kingdom, male animals are usually way more peacocky. Look at the peacock. Just saying that is as flamboyant as you can get for a bird. I like male bird. Look at the cardinal. Look at my beautiful red feathers and look at my ugly brown wife over here. Like I'm just saying Female animals are usually basic AF, and the male animals are, like, glorious! So, like, I think men should peacock a little bit more, is what I'm getting down to. But also, I mean, there was just a time where there wasn't this ta toxic masculinity bullshit and, you know, whatever. And it was like, cool, I like this. There's a bromance, and it's cool. And, like, it's cool to admire your friends, and it's totally okay to be like, wow, you look lovely in that outfit. Like, and it's not gay, but... I'm just saying, I think Sebastiano's crossing a line. I think this is still over the line... For, like, even 1926 bromance territory. All the other guys have a bromance, and that's like... But he is getting a little bit over the top. So I'm just saying. And that's fine. I get it, Sebastiano. Which, But, like, did you have to make the slightly, like, flamboyantly gay character, like... Really a psychopath? Like, I mean... I'm just saying, and you could just sit there and say he's got a bromance, but his bromance is a little deeper... And I think he cares to admit. I'm just saying. Got that feeling when we were playing the Alternativa route. And he just keeps rolling with it. I'm here for it. I'm into it. But I, you can't tell me that he's just friend terms. They were just friends. Nothing more. Really? Are you sure? Because I don't think Sebastiano got that memo. Like, whatever games you were playing. And the, I mean, I just, I, I'm just saying. Maybe just should have outlined for him what was going on because uh, anyway I, oh i already read that before we could say anything in response he continued and i mean well he likes beautiful things so okay well he, okay so he's a little bisexual over here but i still think he leans a little bit more toward henry than he is me and also we definitely know he's crazy because he didn't think yang was beautiful i'm like hello <laughs> crazy anyway one, one, one upon a time? Once. Once upon a time, my hair was long and beautiful too. Sadly, I suffered terrible burns when I was killed. Or, should I say, almost killed. I've done quite well in hiding it, but all growth has ceased in certain parts. 
Ah, please keep it secret. I am so embarrassed. <laughs> Burns. The word reminded me of our first encounter. I am merely impersonating his impersonation. Besides, my face is so terribly scarred from the fire. This new face was given to me by Henry, so I wanted to keep it our little secret. Surely you understand why I mustn't reveal it to anyone. I'm going to guarantee you, even with the burn scar he's got going on, that if he took that mask off, he'd still be beautiful. He'd still be god. You'd be like, he's still freaking beautiful. Turn it out there. I couldn't help but imagine the raging fire that would have led to those injuries. Oh, did he not tell you more? Shame on you for hiding it, Henry. It's the relationship between you. Is the relationship between you two really so shallow? Henry responded coldly to Sebastiano's taunts. Unlike you, I have no desire to tell stories that would make her uncomfortable. Ah, oh, you're still as austere as ever. Like a veil around fragile glass, as though to protect it from shattering. I do love that about you. And knowing more about someone, having them know more about you, both are so gratifying and pleasurable to experience. He says like he knows it from fact. <laughs> There's simply no joy quite like it. You must accept it into your new life at once. Still intoxicated by his excitement, Sebastiano turned his masked face toward me. Signorina, would you like me to share with you the story of how I was almost murdered? He looked to be enjoying himself very much. I would like to know. I don't want to know. I would like to know? We already do know because we learned an alternativa, right? We, as the reader, know. So I would like to know is me, my curiosity. But her, I feel like she would say, I don't want to know because, you know, if Henry doesn't want to tell me, then I'm not going to ask. That's Henry's story to tell. I mean, it's also Sebastiano's story to tell, because he was there too. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm taking Henry's side here, and Henry clearly doesn't want me to know. So, like, I feel like with Henry, it's less about, oh, it would make her uncomfortable, and, like, she would hate me. You know what I mean? So, I feel like I don't want to know unless Henry wants to tell me. But I do want to know. And, like, again, she has not, she does not know in this path, but... <gasps> Ooh, save file six, guys. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's scroll down here. Where are we going? Whoopee. We've got so many save files. Oh, my God. That means so many bad ends in Henry's route. He's got, like, 18 bad ends. Jesus. Anyway. Ooh, I would like to know. All right. Okay. If you'd like to share it, please do. You must think that hearing the story would make me dislike Henry, but... I was confident that my feelings would never change, no matter what I was told. <laughs> Very well. I think you will enjoy this. I first met Henry at the University of Paris 16 years ago. What is... Anonymo over there? Like... There were rumors of an exceptional student beloved by his peers as well as his professors. And naturally, my curiosity got the better of me, and I was determined to have a look for myself. It was that which led me to Henry Lambert. His beauty was absolutely breathtaking. Oh my god, do we get to see the Phantom in a flashback? Like, what he looked like before? Is that I'm okay with that too. I just want to know what he looks like without the mask, man. It's curiosity. Of course, beauty isn't only about appearances. Ah, did you not know this? It is something I understand very well. So see- Oh, so seized was I with- I was thought for a hot second. I forgot that I was- We were- Anyway. So seized was I with the desire to befriend him that I made myself known as soon as I could. We've been together ever since, haven't we, Henry? At the time, I was looking for someone I could use- your knowledge, connections, and money were of all significant value. Were all of significant value. Yes, yes, not as significant as I would have liked, but I'm glad they could be of use to you. Sebastiano laughed, not seeming to be offended at all by Henry's harshness. That's because Sebastiano is crazy and thinks that Henry's in love with him, but it's like, and we're over here like, yeah, well, that would make sense. That's why Henry's not in love with me. Girl, Henry's in love with you, seriously. You gotta get some Sebastiano confidence over here. <laughs> 
Your solitary nature was famous even then, so for me to become your very first friend, the pride I felt was magnificent! Henry was still so young in those days, but his looks were just as beguiling as they are now. How I would love to show you, Signorina. I once had a fetching photograph of him, but alas, it was lost in the fire. I kind of want to see that photo. Like this fucking selfie of the two of them. In flashback, I just... As was everything else. Though that was the loss I most regretted. I mean, I'm just saying. Seriously, you can't tell me that the bromance is a little bit deeper on Sebastiano's part. I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, okay, let's put it this way. Gil got really, really, really upset that Oliver died in that one ending. Actually, it was in the main route. God damn it. Nicola, you killed Oliver. It's Nicola's route, wasn't it? But anyway, he was really, really, really upset, but not this level of upset, okay? And there is, like, just a very tight bromance family love thing going on with Oliver and Gil, like, they are, like, family, they are, bro like, tight-knit, okay? We joke about Dante and Nicola being a little too close as cousins, a little too into each other, okay? They have still not acted this way! I'm just saying. I'm just saying! Like, I... Uh, all the inappropriate jo all the jokes about inappropriate relationships between the characters that we've made has never, ever, ever been such a slap in your face like this man. I'm just... I know he's crazy, but I don't think it's just like... He is really into Henry, and I don't think he's ready to admit it yet. Sweetie, I'm gonna need you to step out of the closet. This is a safe space, okay? It's fine. It's okay. It might not have been okay in 1926. I don't know. Like, I wasn't alive then. As old as I am, I'm not quite that fucking old. Uh, his lips warped with every new expression. After all, it was that captivating beauty of his that led to suffering su such torture at the home into which he was adopted as a child. A sinful thing, isn't it? That beauty could inspire people to act in the worst impulses of human desire. Sebastiano, you've gone far enough. At this point, he was only digging into Henry's painful past to hurt him. But... After I raised my voice, Henry gave a gentle touch to stop me, then glared at Sebastiano. I've never spoken to you about that, have I? I researched your past to find out everything I could. With my knowledge, contacts, and money, of course. I bit down on my lip. I knew he was doing this to provoke us, and I didn't want to fall into his trap. Still, it took all my strength to stay calm. We've gotten off topic, haven't we? With a disturbing smile, Sebastiano resumed the story of his university days. Just before I was set to graduate, Henry put into action his plans to kill me. In those days, I hosted many lively gatherings, often inviting friends to my little... Yadatere? Something. My house? My place? Whatever. It was the perfect environment in which a murder could be carried out with ease. However, it was not until later that Henry put his plans to dispose of me into action. However... In an uncharacteristic blunder, he failed to confirm my death and I ended up surviving! It was a stroke of luck that I was rescued by a kind, elderly couple with no children. They were very well off and had a villa nearby where they could enjoy a bit of leisure time. I was unconscious for many years. When I finally awoke, I could no longer remember who I was. The elderly couple took very good care of me, even saying that I could consider them family. And then you murdered them. I mean, that's also a line that he crossed. The scars have faded, but they do still feel painful from time to time, especially on rainy nights. However, once I regained my memory, that pain turned into pleasure. <laughs> The mind is a powerful thing, isn't it? That's that's a disturbing thought right there. Like, my scars hurt until I remembered who I was, and then they were so pleasurable. And maybe that's also why you're a little fucked in the head. Okay. Again, Sebastiano continued on without waiting for either of us to respond. They made a really, like... Really entertaining, very interesting, and very disturbing character. I'm just saying. I'm so into this. Like, he is insane. I love it. 
I'm also kind of terrified. Like, it's, it's a, it's just, it's, it's amazing. During my amnesia, I was distressed as one could be. Who was I and all of that? But, and I'll spare you the details, I suddenly recovered my memory. I first returned to Rome, the city where I was born, and learned more about the influential Gallier family, all of whom perished in a fire. According to their neighbors, their only son, Sebastiano, had survived. How very intriguing! Who was this other Sebastiano who survived? How could this be possible, Signorina? Henry assumed your identity. He used your name to obtain the position of Direttore at the Berlom Casino. Precisely! He had become Sebastiano, and I am also Sebastiano! We're now two sides of the same coin! And he's obviously the sane one, and you're the crazy one, but okay. You... I held back what I was about to say to him, but he and Henry were not the same. And I thought to myself, I'd like to see Henry again. How can I make our reunion a memorable one? I decided to regain my lost connections and funds first. To start... I killed the kind old couple that had saved me! I tied them up so they couldn't move, and then I set their house ablaze! <laughs> I'm a little disturbed that, like, kind of having fun being the Phantom, but it's disturbing all the same. I just... Killed the people who saved you? Yes, that's right. My dear saviors! Sebastiano seemed to delight in my utter confusion and disbelief. I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but it was my first time murdering someone. I'm a little embarrassed to admit they were the first people I murdered. I, I, you should be embarrassed to admit that you murdered someone at all, not like it was my first time. I can't believe I took so long to murder people. That's not how this world works, Sebastiano Jesus. Uh, I don't believe they were the first. Oh, whatever do you mean? Sebastiano initially looked puzzled, but quickly came to a realization. Ah, oh, you mean that? When I set out those drugs and encouraged the others to partake until they died of overdose? Or when I offered people money in exchange for entertaining me with harrowing tasks? Ah, oh, and there was that person who jumped off the Eiffel Tower for me! What a horrible mess their splattered body made. Well, I think the tower was due for a new paid job anyhow. Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! It just gets crazier. I didn't think it was possible. Oh god, I'm just really afraid where they're gonna go next. From the happy way he recounted those memories, he clearly felt no guilt whatsoever. I mean, it's one thing to be like, I offered drugs to people and then they overdosed. That was an accident. But it just more like sounds like he's like, keep doing drugs, more drugs, more drugs. I want to see how much drugs it takes to overdose. And then he like, that was his, that was the purpose. Not like, oh, I gave my friend coke and they overdosed and I feel really guilty about it. You know what I mean? Like, it was an accident. Like, this was not an accident. Oh, dear God. How did you... I mean, that's one thing. Like, drugged out people keep giving them drugs. I mean, like, okay. But, like, paying people to do crazy shit. I guess if the money's good enough, they're gonna do some crazy shit thinking that they'll be fine or taking the risk. But who jumped off the Eiffel Tower for you? How did you get that to work? How? How? How did you? I. The mind of a madman. I kind of just. I want a little more. I need to know. I want to know, like, how you convince someone to jump off the Eiffel Tower. Because that is just baffling. Anyway. But, Henry, I did not murder them. At most, I merely drove them to their deaths. My first act of committing murder with these two hands occurred after I regained my memories. I tried to recall what you did to me, and then simply used my imagination to fill in the rest. And this whole affair of murder is all trial and error until you have enough practice at it. Ah, if only I had realized sooner the ecstasy it would make me feel! Why did you not tell me, Henry? Surely you had killed many, killed many others long before I caught your eye. Bastion... Yes. Will you be quiet for a moment? You're getting on my nerves. <laughs> As you wish, my dear. Henry turned away from Sebastiano, who was laughing hysterically, and looked at me with concern. Stacy, I 
you feeling all right? My chin dipped slightly in an awkward nod. To be honest, my mind was a complete mess. I mean, I kind of just feel like, yeah, same. Henry had attempted to murder Sebastiano and take his place. And Sebastiano survived, murdering his saviors in the same fashion. I'm <laughs> like, you know, this could have all been prevented. I know, if I didn't want revenge. No, if you had done it right the first time! <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, if you had murdered him right the first time and made sure he was dead before you lit him. I mean, then this wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't be here. Like, seriously, Henry, learn from your mistakes. Do it right next time. I mean, don't make it, not ne no more next times, but I'm just saying, like, if you ever have the chance to hop back in time, do it right. I'm just saying. <laughs> there you go, kids. That's your lesson for today. If you're going to murder people, make sure you do it right the first time. That's actually, you know, good life advice for it. Not murder. Not murder. But, like, just in general. Do it right the first time. Take your time and make sure you do it right. I mean, you know. Kind of, like, measure twice, cut once. You don't, like, go and, like, I'm going to... And then you cut something you're like, fuck, it's too... You know, you measure, you make sure you cut it right the first time. You know, it's valuable life advice in certain situations. And apparently in the situation of murdering people. All right. You know what? That's enough internet for today, kids. Go outside and play. Go touch grass. <laughs> oh, dear God. Don't listen to me. Oh. And Sebastiano survived. Murdering his saviors in the same fashion. I read that. Okay. Why on earth would he do that? I mean, he's criminally insane. Henry had only spoken vaguely about Sebastiano, and I was beginning to understand why. Crazy is just not even enough to describe Sebastiano. Like, that is an insult to crazy. Like, I was like, crazy can be fun. Crazy could be serious. Like, oh, God, there's it's serious, you know? But this is just, this is something else. Like, this does, that doesn't even, that's not the tip of the iceberg. It's not even, like, it's not even close. I wouldn't have believed him, even if he told me that such a person existed. I was so caught up in my thoughts that I hadn't noticed Henry was still looking at me anxiously. I nodded again to show him I was okay. He reached out and hold his hand. And now, may I resume my story? Instead... He looked coldly at Sebastiano. Why did you want me to meet me in Berlone? Was it because of Chloe's grave? This is one re- Oh, that is one reason. But more so because of your obsession with this place. It's the perfect setting for a reunion, don't you agree? I've always wanted to come here myself, to the town that holds so many memories for you. But the Mafia has been quite meddlesome. It would have been thoroughly upsetting if they had killed you. Sebastiano. I interrupted him, not wanting him to say more than he already had. Yes. What is it, Signorina? Where is Chloe? You said you'd return her if I came with Henry. His hideous, twisted smile betrayed the malice that he felt. I cannot bring her out yet. Oh, but perhaps just a glimpse. Her head is in that bag. He reached into the bag at his feet. And pulled out a human skull. Oh. oh, thanks, game. We didn't need the visual. Okay. But there you go. I mean, at least it's not like a mummified skull with a hair. It's just like, it's a skull. Okay, fine. What? May I present Miss Chloe Lambert? What an honor it is to meet you. <laughs> I must say I don't see the resemblance, Henry. Holding up the skull reverently in his hands... He brought it closer and gave it a kiss. Oh, dear. Sebastiano. For the first time, Henry openly showed his disgust at the masked man. How dare you kiss my sister without permission? Sebastiano didn't seem to care, still holding the skull as he changed the topic. By the way, Henry, I am surprised that you, of all people, have not yet noticed. What are you talking about? Apart from your former employees from the casino and moving down the line of acquaintances, I've had plenty of people to play with. What? This time I couldn't hold back my reaction. Sebastiano tilted his head slightly. Oh? Is it only the signorina who's surprised? Had you already noticed, Henry? You knew that there were other victims, but you chose to ignore them. 
<laughs> I see. I've noticing many young women missing as of late. It struck me as strange to hear that. Recently, some young women have gone missing again. Do you mean kidnapped? I cannot say for certain. At the moment, the police seem to believe that's not the case. I mean, we knew about that, and, like, you kind of had to know what it was in, but... Then, the disappearances are... Yes, yes, just as you suspect! Sebastiano nodded happily at my shaky voice. Regardless, I had no knowledge of why they were being targeted. Without a better understanding of who was behind it, there was nothing that could be done. And that is why you decided to give up on these innocent young women you did not know. How very like you, Henry. Henry made no attempt to argue. He remained silent to hold back his emotions as he stared at Sebastiano. I killed most of your casino staff on the spot. Those I kidnapped had their bodies returned later because... No one seemed to pay attention to cases where the bodies were never found. Berlone has been defenseless against me ever since. By the way, allow me to explain my criteria. First, they needed to be beautiful enough to withstand my aesthetic scrutiny. And next, I chose those about the same age as your sister at her death. His lips formed an eerie smile. In order to achieve true beauty, I needed several young ladies to provide me their parts. By combining their most beautiful features... Oh my god, he's like Dr. fucking Frankenstein over here. I could recreate your sister! A new Chloe Lambert! Oh dear god, okay. You know, I should not have said anything. I shouldn't have said anything. I should not have said... I should not have said anything before. When we was getting crazier, and I'm like, how much crazier can we go? Nope, all right, here we go. Here we go. Here we are. Okay, I'm sorry. This is my fault. I asked. I should not have said anything. I regret saying anything. I'm sorry. This is what happens when you ask questions. Oh, dear God. Sweet fucking Jesus. Oh, my God, he's Frankensteining. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Hi. Hi. Okay, we're here. I just... Ah. Oh, my God. He's so much fun, though. Like, I'm horrified, but I'm having a good time, which is just a problem. This is why we see horror movies, right? You're like, this is horrible, and I can't stand But I'm here for this. Like, he is just so insane. You don't think it could get worse, and it keeps getting worse. It's amazing. A new Chloe Lambert? I brain a difficulty understanding him. Yeah, I understand the want to dissociate and pretend you're not here anymore. Oh, I still have the parts I didn't use. Do you think I should send them back to their families? How? How could you do this? His smile only deepened. Very well. I shall answer your simple question. I had a flash of inspiration the other day. Henry plotted for many years to avenge his sister. And naturally, that meant his sister was of great importance to him. And so I thought I'd help him meet her once again. He showed me a photograph of her in the past. I absolutely did not. Henry denied it firmly, looking irritated. Sebastiano was unfazed and continued in the same lighthearted manner. Oh, then perhaps I saw it while I was going through your things. Well, it's not important. I decided to assemble it based off that memory. The sourcing of materials has gone exceptionally well, and I'm very nearly finished. However, the head is a very delicate undertaking. The parts above her neck are not quite right. So I thought I'd go back to basics and dig up her grave. The actual skeleton makes the very best reference. Besides, I've been dying to meet Henry's sister, you see. He smiled and licked the skull. Oh, God! Okay, I'm sorry! It just keeps getting worse! Stop it! Stop it! You don't know where that skull's been. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry, Bird. Are you okay? Don't... I'm not sure if I'm laughing or crying. I'm not sure if this is funny or horrifying. You know, sometimes you laugh in, like, the worst times. You're like, I should be sad, but I'm laughing because, like, it's just, you just can't. You're like, I don't know if my brain is broken. I think my brain just broke, guys. Oh my god, he licked the skull. I'm really glad that I managed to read that before my brain just snapped in half, okay? 
Like, <laughs> because I don't think I can get through it half as seriously as I did. And I didn't even make it through. Oh, God. He smiled and licked the skull. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Oh, dear God. Oh, running his tongue down into an empty sock. Oh, God, it gets worse. That sentence just got worse. How? How did that sentence get worse? He smiled and licked the skull. You think that's as bad as it could get? How could... And then running his tongue down into an empty socket. I just... Oh, God. I... Oh, no. <laughs> I literally think I'm broken. I don't think I could do this anymore. Oh my god. Oh dear god. This man is insane. Okay, put game. Okay, I'm I I'm going to wave my white flag. I admit defeat. Please, please stop. Please don't. Because I don't want to know how much more there is a curiosity of like how much more depraved and fucked up can he get? Seriously, they keep crossing lines. I didn't think we're there. I am so afraid of where this is going to go. A chill ran down my spine. He still had a smile on his face. This is so disturbing. As though this was nothing unusual to him. Oh, I burned the rest apart from the skull. And my atelier was getting too crowded for my taste. Oh. Here's her ashes. Free cremation, I guess. You're horrible! To have burned the rest of her remains. It was cruel enough to exhume her, but he laughed without any trace of guilt. It was like, cremation, like, really wrong in the Catholic Church? Is it still wrong? Is that, like, a thing? Is that why? Like, I mean, listen. If you were like, I want to be buried, and then someone dug you up and cremated you, like, it does, like, offensive. But, like, I mean, okay. Free cremation, though. Like, alright, listen, listen. Against her will and against my wishes, or Henry's wishes, rather, but, you know, okay, but, uh, but, it, it, it's gotten worse. This is, like, the least offensive thing he's done. That's not true, but it's still one of the least offensive things. I have not yet swept away the ashes, so I can return them to you if you wish, Henry. That's right. For that last tricky part regarding the head, I finally figured it out. Your sister was blonde, wasn't she? The new key maiden beside you would do splendidly! What do you think, Henry? Sebastiano. Henry pulled out a gun and pointed it at him. His eyes were filled with fury. The same as they were the night he opened the children's gift. Henry, please call me Bastion. I will kill you. His voice was darker than ever before. I can just imagine. But despite the rage he must have felt, Henry remained calm. You must have a backup plan. A backup plan? <laughs> yes, that is correct, Henry. I do indeed! Truly, I am no match for you. If I were to die here, my friends would follow instructions to deliver a special surprise to the town of Berlone. A surprise? Oh, like blowing up the church? Or, oh, 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 right. The smallpox, or whatever the fuck, right? The word filled me with dread, whatever it was that he had. The plague, basically. Considering all that he had said and done so far, I knew that it would only mean disaster that he got from America. Because, you know, way to go, American science! Just doing all sorts of shit. Making, like, some kind of rampant disease. And then, atomic bomb. Woo, go! Uh, science? Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Look at what happens. <laughs> science is good, though, but I mean, sometimes. Simmer it down, science. Simmer down. I mean, look at Bastion over here. He's trying to be like fucking Victor Frankenstein. Simmer it down with the fucking science, buddy. Simmer it down. Okay? He is not a person that should science. Anyway. Considering all that he had said and done so far, I knew that it would only mean disaster. I have no intention of dying so easily. You've already killed me once, haven't you? We're over time, but it's fine. I'm no longer satisfied with being murdered in an ordinary way. 
in any ordinary way. Sebastiano kept a smile on his face as he tucked Chloe's skull back inside the bag. And now that we've had a pleasant chat, I must be going. I can't wait, because then we'll get to see realived Chloe, or just corpse body Chloe. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, I was concerned about, like, when he dug up her body, and then I wasn't really thinking about the people that he's hacked and sliced and skinned and sewn together and is putting on a Chloe... But, like, oh, 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 that smells not pleasant, I bet. And then he licked the skull and put his tongue in the eye socket. God. Oh, God. I'm going to have fucking nightmares. I'm going to wake up ten years from now with a dream of that and be like, what the f- Oh, when I have finally forgotten that, when that image doesn't haunt me. And I finally let it go into the ether, it's gonna come back. I will be haunted by that fucking forever. I can only hope that my shitty memory where I'm like, what are we talking about? I'm gonna forget this. I hope by tomorrow I've forgotten this. Give me Chloe. Hmm? I never said I'd be returning her today, did I? Henry must have expected that answer since not even his eyebrows moved. <laughs> well, so long! He turned his unprotected back to us and, bound, and bounded down the hillside. I can just imagine him just, like, actually fucking skippy-bounding. <sighs> we will come back two days after that nightmarish meeting in the next part. So technically, two days after this, you just have fun scrubbing your brain of this for the next two days. And I'm gonna go cry. <laughs> I don't think anything ever prepared me for that. I I don't I don't think anything could have possibly prepared me for that. I hope that those of you who have played this game before me and knew that was coming, I hope that the reaction was everything you dreamed of because I can't imagine having played this, watching someone else play and go, wait, wait, wait for it. Oh, just wait for it. Oh, girl, wait for it. Like, and just because I feel like that is that pinnacle moment. You know what I mean? Like when you've played a game and you watch someone else do it, you're like, oh, oh, wait for the reveal. And it's just seeing people's reaction. You're like, yeah, 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 me too. You know what I mean? So I really hope for anyone who played this before that that lived up to your expectations or exceeded them. I hope I exceeded expectations because holy shit. I want to be mad at you for not warning me, but also, like, I don't want spoilers, so, like, I'm glad you didn't. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, like, but I'm still going to be slightly mad. How dare you? <laughs> but no, seriously, don't ever tell me anything that's coming up. Don't even be like, oh, just wait. Actually, just wait is kind of okay, but but don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. Either. But now you can revel and laugh at the trauma that that was. Okay, I... I need a drink. Um, I have to record the next part right after this. So you get a two day break and I don't get a break at all. Like five minutes. But anyway, I will see you guys next time. If I haven't cried myself to death. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.